Am I ever going to be judged for participation? I'm so glad you asked that question. Getting scored on your participation in class might not make sense to you today, but I can tell you that in the future, things that you do will always be a part of a team, especially at NASA. Active participation and being able to communicate your ideas is incredibly important for being successful in the workplace. At NASA, we rely on the participation of every member of our workforce to make our mission successful. The creativity and innovation of this agency is fueled by individuals who contribute their unique perspectives and aren't afraid to speak up. So yes, actively participating is one of those skills you gain through classroom participation that will truly benefit you for years to come. When am I ever going to need to use these history lessons? At NASA, history is really important to us. For example, we're applying lessons learned from the past Apollo moon missions to help us prepare for the Artemis missions going back to the moon and beyond. In my job, I rely on the lessons learned from past robotic missions to help us fix satellites and collect samples in space. History isn't just about memorizing dates and names. It's about learning from the past and using that knowledge to make the best decisions for the future. When am I ever gonna need to use physics, chemistry, math? You can use chemistry to bake a cake or to make new medicines that can help people. You can use physics to ride a skateboard or to build a rocket to explore the planets. You can use math to figure out if you can afford to buy that really cool car or to understand what's happening inside a black hole. Here at NASA, we're using math, physics, and chemistry on DART, the Double Asteroid Redirection Test Mission. On September 26th, the DART spacecraft will deliberately crash into the asteroid Dimorphos at a speed of 15,000 miles an hour, changing the asteroid's motion in space. We're doing this to learn how to deflect asteroids, prevent a collision, and keep our planet safe. When am I ever going to need to study as an adult? That's a really good question, and I feel like I've been studying my whole life. So I studied throughout school, and then when I got to NASA, I kept studying so I could learn more. I'll give you an example. When I was going to school, I studied engineering. And then when I got to graduate school, I changed over to science. And I became an expert in the skeletal system and got my PhD in what happens to bones when we go out into space. Then I came to NASA and I was responsible for implementing a scientific strategy for a lot more human research than I had learned in school. So I had to keep learning. So I already knew about the bones, but then I needed to learn about what happens to the cardiovascular system in our hearts when we go into space. What happens to our muscles when we go into space and we don't use them as much anymore because we don't have the effects of gravity and the entire human body in space. So I feel like I'm just always constantly learning and I love it. When am I ever going to need to present anything? So I'm so glad you asked that question because presentation skills are honestly crucial life skills. And you might not know it, but you're actually exercising and training this muscle almost all the time. So let me give you the perfect scenario. Engineers and astrophysicists at NASA recently released the highly anticipated James Webb Space Telescope first images. And in these amazing images, you can see hundreds and thousands of stars and galaxies all around. But we had to present that information to the general public. And even now, I can tell you cool facts about how Stephens Quintet has five galaxies almost forming this galactic dance with each other and how we know that there's an active black hole in at least one of them. You see, presentation skills allow you to articulate your thoughts and ideas to your audience and help stir them to either thought, action, and in some cases, even both. Great question. When am I ever going to need to work in groups? Well, let me tell you, Clayton, at NASA, we work in groups all the time. In fact, no one has ever gone to space by themselves. I know what you're thinking. Megan, those first space flyers were in a capsule with just one seat. But even then, it took a team to get them there and to get them home safely. When we're tackling the big important problems, like designing and operating new spacecraft, we need a team of people willing to bring their best ideas, their questions, and their solutions to make it all work. Sometimes, you need to step up and be the leader. Sometimes you need to be a strong follower, but always you need to be respectful of what each person brings to the team and support each other to reach mission success. Together, we will go far.